For those of you who don't know, Dragon's Run is a Bollinger and Mabillard designed coaster that opened in 2017 at Dragon Park in Halong Bay, Vietnam. It hits a top speed of 65 miles per hour and reaches a max height of 150 feet. With six inversions, it is also the closest coaster to one of the world's seven natural wonders and has undergone one relocation throughout its lifetime. So, with that tidbit of information, I present to you Dragon's Run, a brief history as well as my experience on one of the rarest credits outside of the United States. On April 15th, 2008, Hard Rock Park in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, unveiled Led Zeppelin The Ride. Led Zeppelin was a massive B&M sitting coaster that featured onboard audio and was built next to and partially on top of a beautiful lake. Financial hardships essentially ended up leaving Led Zeppelin in operation for just one sad year before its closure in September of 2009. For the next seven years, it sat standing but not operating at the park with very minimal care. Then, in early 2014, the ride was seen listed on sale at www.italientetel.com and was quickly purchased by a new unnamed theme park under construction in Vietnam. Later that same year, cranes were on site at Freestyle Music Park, confirming the dismantling of the ride. After that point, information on the status of the coaster was sketchy, but by 2017, we saw it open at that theme park in Vietnam. Fast forward three years to February 22nd, 2020, and I found myself at this very same park. But first, I gotta start at the beginning. Prior to my visit, I actually had no clue that the thing existed or was even anywhere near us. The trip I was on was solely based on travel with my family, and therefore I wasn't particularly looking for coasters. However, as fate would have it, we'd actually booked a cruise in Halong Bay that week prior, which prompted us to spend the night in a hostel near the dock where the ship was located. And as we were driving in, I was half asleep, I hit the window and I actually woke up and looked to my right and I saw this massive white coaster. And of course by the truck stop, I knew right away it was a B&M. I just had no clue where it came from, why it was here, or if anyone even knew it existed. We made it to the hostel later that night, and when we got to our hotel room, I went straight to RCDB and just started doing a ton of research. When I woke up in the morning, of course the first place I wanted to go was Dragon Park. Now, this is where it gets confusing. I don't know how to read whatever it is they read in Vietnamese. I speak English and a little bit of Mandarin. So when we were in Vietnam, I was on the website researching what time the park opened, and I was using Google Translate to figure out what was going on. I Google translated pretty badly, and we ended up getting to the park about two hours before opening. However, I can't completely complain about this because this was, first of all, my fault, but secondly, it gave me time to walk around the park and just observe things in the area. So the first hour in, I was expecting to start seeing some test runs, right? In the US, there are inspections for hours before the park opens, checking bolts, everything else, and making sure the ride is ready to go for the day. An hour before opening when I was sitting on a grass lawn just watching the ride, I had not seen a single train test. And for any enthusiasts that know what this is like, this is usually a very bad sign for coasters. But what I hadn't realized was that there are actually a very different set of safety standards throughout the country versus the US. So what I actually was seeing was not that the coaster wasn't being tested, it's that they didn't actually require a test run to be made in the morning. So as you can imagine, me not knowing this information, I was very scared and nervous at this point that it was not going to open. And this sounds pretty dramatic for anyone who's not an enthusiast, but when you see a B&M sitting there that's a super rare credit, it'd be a major bummer not to write it. So I was on the edge of my seat for a while. 30 minutes before park opening, I still hadn't seen this thing test. I was freaking out. I went to the front of the park. They were very short staffed. I ended up buying a ticket, which were $5 by the way, and I was waiting for the park to open. This is also where it gets weird. The park essentially looked abandoned. We were the only people, for the whole duration of the two hours we were waiting for the park to open, that were there. There was not anyone else coming to this park. Finally, the gates opened, I walked in, and I ran straight to Dragon's Run. There was an employee standing outside the gate, I Google translated and showed them my phone what I wanted to ask, and he assured me that the ride was going to be operational. Now once again, not seeing these rides test this morning, I was very, very skeptical of this, and I did not think that ride operator knew what he was talking about. I ended up getting in line, I went to the front, and they stopped me in the queue. And this is where it got interesting. I ended up waiting there for 20 minutes, not really sure what was going on, and I was seeing staff in the station and the ride up was behind the dispatching panel. So really I wasn't too concerned at that point because I was seeing stuff going on in the station, but regardless I just wanted to get on and ride the dang thing. So finally they let me in, I sit down, and I realize something. <laughs> I They have not run any inspections, any tests, nothing prior to the opening of this ride today and I was gonna be the first person to ride this. I did get a front row seat, and they sent us straight out of the station. 
first ride of the day. So I was pretty terrified. I don't know. I don't know if I could trust it. I love B&M, but who knows how the park's been operating this thing. The fact that nobody was in the park says something. Anyways, I ended up riding it, and my first experience was pretty good in the front row. Coming off of it, I decided to re-ride it once again with my uncle, my sister, my mom, and I sat in row six to the back. Later that same day, I actually ran to the little Vacoma family flyer they have. Like, we literally sprinted because we had to catch a flight. We did not plan our time accordingly. So I ended up getting two credits from this park and I left and I do really want to leave a full on review of this place. I thought it was super cool and exciting. Very, very fun little park. I wish I had more time. We probably had like maybe an hour tops in the park and I got two rides on Dragon's Run and one on Dragon's Flight. So with that being said, you now know my very weird random experience on what in my opinion is the rarest credit that I have. I would love to leave a full review on the park for you guys if you'd like. Of course, I didn't have a ton of time inside, but I did get a glimpse of what it was like in Vietnam. And I gotta say, communism is weird. There was no people there. The whole place looked abandoned. It, it was just bizarre. So I think I'd have a pretty funny review to leave for you guys. Anyways, that's my take on a pretty random coaster that I was able to ride. Um, if you've made it this far, thanks for listening to my little stories, and I appreciate all you guys have done. We're also coming up on 1,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for that. And if you haven't already checked us out on Instagram, we're also coming up on 16,000 followers now, I believe. And I'll link that in the description as well. Thank you, James, so much for editing this. Uh, James actually wasn't on this trip, unfortunately, but he was still able to edit the video and the visuals you were watching today. Once again, my name is Josiah. Thank you for joining us again on the channel, and I will catch you all for another video this Friday. See ya.